Qbot Note S is a promising budget device and I will give my best to represent you its advantages and disadvantages. I will open the box and show you its content. In the box you get the phone and it came wrapped in this silicone casing. Also we get a transparent silicone case for the phone itself which is a really neat package content furthermore there is a user guide USB cable and wall charger with EU standard bundled charger is one ampere output and for today's standards it's on slow side before we go further in review, I want to speak about phone specifications. They are quite uh, similar to other phones in budget class and price point. It is a dual SIM, dual standby phone with Android 5.1 Lollipop. It can take two micro SIM cards and you also can add a micro SD cards to expand uh, internal memory. The screen is 5.5 inches and resolution is 1280 by 720. It is a IPS unit with pixel density of 267. Processor is MediaTek 6580 with graphic Mali 400MP. 2GB of RAM is more than enough in this budget class and also you get a 16GB of internal storage. Back camera is real hardware 5 megapixels, but with software you get 8 megapixels. It has a single LED flash and front facing camera is 2 megapixels and also with software you get 5 megapixels. These camera higher resolutions are interpolated and they are set by default. Battery size is generous with 4150 mAh. Moving now on external look, phone design is really beautiful. In Magical 3 and those are a HomeTom HD7 and DGX5, this one is the most beautiful, at least for my perspective. I mention this because they are uh, competitors in price and hardware specifications. On the front side there is a huge 5.5 inch screen, the bezels are quite a thin and this screen is really nice, I will speak about it later in the video. Just on top of the screen there is a front facing camera with 5 megapixels interpolated, proximity sensor, ambient line sensor and on the left you have a in-call speakerphone grill. On the bottom of the screen we have a three capacitive touch buttons. They are back, home and more options. They don't have a backlight. I really hate that, I say that every time and I really hope that in the future in this budget class manufacturers will start to implement a backlight option. On the left hand side there is nothing just a beautiful silver trim, it is not metal, it is made totally of plastic. On the right hand side we have a power button with slip and wake functions, also the volume controls up and down. These buttons are very well made, they feel nice, they are clicky, there is no unwanted movement or anything like that. On the bottom there is a huge nothing. On the top we have a standard micro USB port for charging and synchronization, also with 3.5mm input jack for music. Backside is totally made of plastic, it is uh, very well made, there is no crunching or any sound when you remove the cap and back it on. Top part is filled with back facing camera of 8 megapixels interpolated, also there is a single LED flash and Qbot branding. Bottom part is filled with speakerphone grill and it is quite a nice speakerphone. There is no distortion on maximum levels, it is clear, the sound is not loud a lot, but it is pretty decent and usable. To access a SIM tray slots, you need to remove a backplate. It's a clip-on backplate. The first thing that you can see is a huge battery, it is a 4150 milliampere hours unit. When you remove it you can access uh, SIM trays. Both are for micro SIM cards 
and on the left you have a microSD slot which means that if you use a microSD card you won't lose a SIM tray slot which is really nice Screen on this phone is one of the best in this budget class. Why? Well, it have a really good color representation, saturation, contrast, everything is good. You see the blacks? They are nearly totally black. I will do a quick compare. Here is my iPhone 6s, Qbot on the left. And just look at this really insane screen for the price and keep in mind that because of the recording I put the brightness on lowest on the Qbot and on my iPhone it is not quite uh, on lowest overall a really good screen the viewing angles are really nice just look at this I was really impressed when I unpacked the phone and the first time looked at the screen it was like wow this phone costs 80 bucks and the screen is really nice it's a lot better from HomeTom HT7 and Duji X5 like for a one mile it's really better a lot. A good screen impression doesn't stop outdoors as you can see the screen visibility is really, really good. Viewing angles are still on better side. I will show you now. The brightness is set to maximum. Android Lollipop 5.5 runs really, really smoothly on this device. It's uh, in majority because manufacturer didn't include uh, any bloatware or a lot of customization. It is a really slimmed down version and I like that because uh, user will install what he needs. If he wants to change a launcher, he will change it. I don't like when manufacturer put a lot of their stuff and in majority of cases users don't like that. The phone runs really really smoothly. It's snappy. There is a little of micro lag and there and here slowdowns but nothing major. It's fastest from the budget phones, at least these I tested. I will note that this is a first boot, there are no applications in Task Manager. That's why, because some application needs a bit of time to load. Let's see now the benchmark results, N22 first. A result is 23,919. It is a expected result from this chipset. And here you can see a detailed information.
Geekbench score uh, single core 346, multi core score 1103. Now let's check the gaming performance. Gaming performance is decent, or at least if you consider how much you pay, it is a lot what you get. It is worth to mention that phone gets hot in this part here. It uh, doesn't get unpleasant, but it is nice to know. Now let's see uh, camera performance. I will include uh, still pictures and video samples from back-facing and front-facing camera. Indoor video sample from front-facing camera. As you can see, the video quality is generally poor, but still can be used for voice calling and video chat. Camera is the weakest point of this phone, and as you can see from the samples provided, it is kind of bad. It's nothing special, but you can use it in emergency situations when you don't have any other device to take the picture. Personally, I hope that in the future manufacturers will start to implement uh, better cameras in this budget segment. I know that it's hard to ask for that because the price is already too low and we want more RAM, better processors, huge screen, everything and to pay low amount of money. The battery performance is really nice. I was able to get a two days of medical usage nearly without the gaming that includes uh, voice calls, messaging, browsing the Facebook, internet and in majority of times I was indoors so probably I will get uh, 
little bit less outdoors when the screen brightness will be on the maximum. In any case, you will get a really nice uh, battery usage. My final conclusion for this phone is something that I really wanted to share with you. I will definitely start from the screen. Screen on this phone is something that got me excited really, really a lot. The screen is really good. I didn't, didn't expect to get a screen of this quality for this price and this segment budget everything else the screen is really nice i like it it's bright it have really nice contrast colors representation there is no black bleeding it is a really really nice screen all other features worked really good the phone performs really well with the android lollipop it's smooth it works nice it's clean there is no bloatware and also what i really like about this phone is that it's really solid it's well made, it stays in the hand nice, you get a pre-applied screen protector and case in package. That's always a huge plus for me. Battery is also on plus side. It is really good, it performs really well. Charging is a bit slower with provided wall charger, but you can always use some other 2 amperes output wall charger to increase the charging speed. If you are in doubt which one to pick between this one or HomTom HD7 or DUG X5 and I'm speaking about 2 GB versions, I would pick this one. Why? Well, yes, the chipset is the same like on those two 1 GB versions, but the speed difference is really small and overall you get a better screen, better battery and better build quality. For me, that is the more important thing than the chipset. I also want to note that all standard features like telephony, Wi-Fi, GPS, everything performed really well. And I won't bother to speak about that because it is a common sense that these features will work standardly out of the box. If something doesn't perform as it should, I will speak about that. But on this phone, everything is just fine. In the end of this review, if I missed something, you can ask me in comments, I will gladly answer. I got Qbot Note S from the Gearbest, the price was around 80 bucks, and I think that on flash sale was 75, which is a really a bargain, considering that one gigabyte versions of Hampton HD7 X5 you can get for 60 bucks, so just keep an eye on Gearbest and buy it for the best possible price. There are links in the description so you can check it out. I hope you enjoyed watching. If you like this video, thumbs up. And if you want to see more content like this, subscribe to my channel. And until next time, see ya!